Hello, my name is Nina Loudon, and today I will be speaking about aerophyid mites for biological control of field bindweed and hoary cress in Colorado. The biology of aerophyid mites. Aerophyid mites from family Aerophyidae are some of the smallest arthropods known to humankind at 0.2 of a millimeter. Currently, 3,790 species are recognized, and it is estimated this is merely 10% of the actual species found on the Earth. 80% of these aerophyid species are monophagous, or feed on only one host plant. Monophagy lends aerophyid mites exceptional suitability as biological control agents. Currently, six species have been purposely introduced in the United States for biocontrol of rush skeleton weed, St. John's wort, lantana, old world climbing fern, field bindweed, and hoary cress. A species of Acaria is being petitioned for Russian olive as well. Here in Colorado, Acaria mallerby, or field bindweed mites, have been distributed throughout the state for over 15 years. Why was it necessary to release field bindweed mites in North America at all? I know most of you watching this already know the answer, but just in case you need a nice visual, here is what bindweed mite is very capable of. An extensive creeping root system allows it to form these dense monospecific patches as well as very long-lived seeds. Field bindweed originates from Europe and Asia. It was first reported in the United States in 1739, and today it is listed as one of the 10 most serious weeds in the world, as the creeping roots and long-lived seeds allow it to disperse and prosper in crops across the globe. Seeds are viable for 10 plus years, and some estimate they can live in the soil as long as 50 years. Tillage only breaks roots and increases plant numbers. Herbicide application or mechanical removal will suppress densities, but only in the short term. The introduction of field bindweed mites in the United States was performed in Bushland, Texas in 1989. The populations that were first released originated from Greece. Observable mite damage did not appear to increase for several years post-release. One of the field sites where these mites were released was accidentally mowed, leading to the discovery that mowing is useful to disperse the mites. Currently, these mites have been redistributed and found to be established in states including Missouri, Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, New Mexico, Nevada, Utah, and Colorado. Successes. In parts of Wyoming, Montana, and New Mexico, mites have been reported to be dispersed and having success in controlling bindweed densities at some locations. In Texas, where the mites were initially released, densities have been reported to be reduced by as much as 95% along some roadsides, yards, and gardens. In Utah, measured plots using SIMP have ranged in reductions of bindweed density from 20 all the way up to 80%. An average decrease of 60% was found in three years. At most locations, establishment with noticeable signs of impact will take several years. In Colorado, these mites have been widely distributed, and though success is variable, they have been very effective in western Colorado. The initial signs of establishment include folding of the leaves with curling and the formation of galls housing dense populations of the microscopic mites. The midrib behind the folded leaf will become noticeably bumpy and twisted over time as the plants are stunted. These plants will be reduced in vigor, produce less flowers and seeds over time, and individual plants may die over long enough periods of time. The mites will overwinter in root buds and soil, and distinctively damaged plants 
can be pulled and moved to new patches of healthy bindweed as the damage becomes observable, appearing, and reappearing. Here are some photos of early symptoms to watch for as well as later symptoms that are quite distinctive as you can tell. The early symptoms include the folded leaf and the bumpy midrib of the stem behind the folded leaf. Late symptoms as shown on the bottom of the photos are quite distinguishable as the plants become extremely twisted and clumpy also very low to the ground. These infested plants contain literally hundreds of thousands of the microscopic mites. They are at a stage where you could pull and move them to new areas of infested bindweed, simply wrapping and twisting, folding them under new healthy plants so that the mites can crawl over to healthy plant material. A release of field bindweed mites consists of approximately 150 grams of mite infested bindweed. This release will come iced and a FedEx overnight shipment along with thorough release instructions indicating how best to release the mites and what to expect. Individuals are generally shipped one release as we consider them a starter colony. Weed managers can order up to five, and we encourage you to form your own collectible nursery site so that you can distribute the mite releases throughout your county. Field bindweed mite releases performed in Colorado consists of eight to 900 over the last several years. Although this seems like a lot, our wait list far exceeds the amount of releases performed per year. Mite releases may be shipped out of state, but only in coordination with an APHIS 526 permit. Here are some very useful maps indicating where most field bindweed mite releases have been performed here in Colorado. And you can see the eastern part of the state far exceeds releases performed in uh, surrounding counties. We hope that this concentrated number of releases will result in success. So some troubleshooting tips. It has been observed that the mites are more able to successfully establish in dry years and in unirrigated environments versus cultivated or heavily irrigated row crops. The mite galling may be greater at dry sites because field bindweed is drought stressed, but it might also be due to the fact the mites are sensitive to water and humidity. If heavy rain, snow, hail, or severe late freezing occurs after the mites are released or when they're re-emerging in spring, it will take longer in a season for populations to reach levels sufficient for production of noticeable damage. If you are able to avoid a heavy rainfall before releasing, that is advised. The bindweed mite releases may be stored in a refrigerator for two to three days prior to release. Less storage is better, but if it enables you to avoid heavy rain, hail, or snow, then it is advised to do so. Some important takeaways to remember. Field bindweed mites will not establish for everyone. Some releases have led to great success in one to three years, while other landowners have not had establishment after releasing for two or more consecutive years. These mites will not eradicate your bindweed. Of course, like all biocontrols, they will reduce spread and lower the densities of the patch. Heavy watering where you initially re release them is not recommended as they may wash away when crawling to the new host plants. Non-irrigated, lightly watered locations are preferable for establishment. Mowing 
or hand pulling to move infested plants to uninfested bindweed will spread the mites quicker, as each mite probably only moves a foot in its lifetime. If landowners have a large enough infestation to warrant control rather than eradication, these mites should be released when they become available in late May through early August. Next, I will talk about the challenges to establish hoary crest mites within Colorado. Acaria drabi have been mass reared in Montana and resulted in successful shipment to other states, including Colorado. On October 15th of 2021, we received approximately 600 hoary crest gall mites from Dr. Jeff Littlefield with Montana State University. Here is a video to briefly show the hoary crest mite in action. And you can see just to the top left of the mite is an egg. Unfortunately, signs of mite activity in the form of galled plant tissue have not yet been observed. The insectary is hopeful further releases performed in 2023 at various locations may lead to successful establishment in Colorado. Some of the issues that may have hindered establishment of these mites include adequate vernalization of potted hoary cress as to induce actively growing plant tissue, tissue as the mites prefer. Seasonal timing of release on bolting outdoor plants will be crucial as well. These mites develop more frequently in actively growing plants rather than rosettes or already flowered stems. Field collection of large enough numbers to release to the public will take two or more years post-establishment. Once establishment has occurred, monitoring impact and rate of spread of the mites will be addressed using SEMP, Wide-scale mite distribution within our state and surrounding states is an achievable goal once adequate conditions and host plant material are suitable for the new residents to establish. I would really like to thank my insectary colleagues as all their kindness and support are immeasurable as well as their scientific advice. So thank you so, so much. And special thanks to Dr. Jeff Littlefield for all his support with the hoary crest mites and Dr. Dan Bean as well, who is a lifelong mentor. Um, I would also really like to acknowledge many, many seasonal techs who have helped throughout the years to make all these programs run so efficiently. So thank you. One more thank you to all the amazing scientists that have made this PowerPoint possible. These are the papers I used for information in this presentation. So thank you to the literature cited here.